Today, over 2 billion people on Earth live and work on small and medium scale farms. This population includes 1 billion of the poorest people alive today. Most have limited access to clean energy and sustainable agricultural inputs and live under threat of climate change. About 80% of the food that we eat is grown by small and medium scale farmers. That means that a huge amount of agricultural land and a huge amount of our food system is dependent on people that don't have the tools that they need to grow, be more efficient and be more productive. It's a lot of hard work. Growing food is really hard work. Working the land is very hard work and working with animals is very hard work. They do that without technology, they do that without uh, capacity building, they do that without financing. So they really aren't given the resources to be more productive and more efficient. Hay tiempos de decir que ahí no tenemos dinero para sustentar no todo. Pues tenemos que ver la manera de sustentarle de otra forma. La cuestión es que aquí él es campesino. Únicamente sobrevivimos de esto. Y yo la verdad la ciudad no me gusta. So that is really one of the most fundamental challenges that we have today as a society because over the last 30 years we were able to double our food production using chemical fertilizers, pesticides, tons of petroleum and all the best land. Aquí estaba seco apenas antier empezó a llover acá. Ayer cayó un aguacero. Era en marzo antes de la siembra, ahorita ya es puro y apenas sembramos, pero ya de hace unos años para que ya cambió también. Se quedó junio y están sembrando apenas. That's something that basically demonstrates I think the capacity of humans to underestimate the complexity of life. And there's no more gains that we can get out of dumping more chemicals on the land, using more chemical fertilizers, using more pesticides, it can cause major problems. We need to do every single thing that we can to produce less carbon and do everything we can to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. The success or failure of these small farmers will impact the world's biggest challenges food security, climate change, and environmental sustainability. When I think of the 500 million small farms, I see an opportunity of people that already work really hard. They're already committed to their community. They already grow more food than they need or consume, and they already sell it and exchange it in their community. They're already committed to protecting a piece of the earth. And that land is one of the best hopes that we have of preserving massive tracts of land in a sustainable way and make sure that we create a resilient, climate-smart food system. What Sistema Bio does is makes a system called a biodigester. A biodigester basically takes all the organic waste from a farm and it puts it through a treatment process that removes all of the organic contents and basically kills off the bacteria that's inside that can be harmful to the environment. And the byproduct of that is a renewable energy, a gas, a biogas, that allows small farmers to basically uh, to cook, to produce electricity or to produce mechanical energy. The other end of the system, the outflow, is a nutrient-rich organic fertilizer. This can be used to displace chemical fertilizers, which are expensive and damaging to the earth, and improve the crop yields for small farmers. Raw manure, when it's left out, 
begins to decompose and that produces methane, which goes into the atmosphere. Methane has 25 times the heating potential of CO2. So it's a very, very important gas to limit and try to remove from the atmosphere. When we produce biogas, we're basically producing a renewable and clean source of energy that doesn't emit greenhouse gases, but displaces other fossil fuels or fuel wood or other things that do produce greenhouse gases. It's a very clean, blue, beautiful flame that allows people to remove the smoke from their kitchen and to obviously reduce the cost of energy and to have a very versatile fuel. So you can use the biogas directly in a stove, in a hot water heater. Uh, you can use it for heating um, or processing food elements or heating space for say piglets. Um, but you can also use it inside of an engine. So when we put biogas into an engine, now we basically create mechanical energy. And if we want, we can connect that to a water pump. Uh, we can run a mill. We can do any of the mechanical energy activities that farmers need. So biofertilizer is what comes out the other side of the Sistema Bio unit. This is basically what's left over once the bacteria have completely broken down all of the organic waste that came in. And this is really important because we produce a very high quality biofertilizer that's rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, which are all the macronutrients that are needed for agriculture. But it also has a ton of micronutrients, amino acids, and enzymes that really improve the quality of the soil and provide nutrients for the plants. This biofertilizer can displace directly the chemical fertilizers that farmers today use and are damaging the land, the soil, and cost a lot of money. So basically at the end of a season, the farmers have a better harvest, but their soil's also deeper. So they're essentially building up a bank over time and be able to increase their productivity over time. ¿Y qué vamos a hacer? Ah, ya tengo, ya aplicaste esto para los árboles ya, Inge. Pues échale porque vamos a aplicar esto. Ya, ahí andamos. Esta huerta, primero Dios, que está armando Martín, en dos años máximo está en su capacidad para producir un Es inversión y es tiempo. So this energy is essentially homegrown. You can think of it uh, produced on the farm, uh, free range energy right there at the farm. And that's really, really important because instead of now a farmer pulling money out of his pocket and having to buy energy from uh, a company from far away, an international company, now they're basically able to save that money, produce energy with the resources that, that they have available and consumed uh, in a way that's more sustainable. Yo desde agosto, septiembre, pues que empecé a producir gas, ya no he comprado un solo tanque de gas. Incluso ya retiré mi estufa. Ahora la tengo para la, a la este, no más guardar las cosas. Los tanques ya los guardé. Hablemos de 380 cada dos meses. A nosotros no, bueno, no nos gustaría ver a nuestros hijos en las fábricas. No, yo no. Prefiero que estén aquí trabajando, haciendo algo. Ellas no nos van a acabar su vida. Pues así, con gente con esa pregunta viene y nos dice, ¿y si funciona? ¿Y de verdad está sacando gas? ¿Y de verdad? Digo, sí. Y ya le explico que... para allá, digo, pásenle. O ya que les di de comer, así un taquito, esto fue, este y es el que son de gente, Y son gente que ya han salido, ya han estudiado, han estudiado y ¿a poco este? Ah, bueno, If we can improve the efficiency and productivity of these small farmers, we can improve the economic conditions of a billion of the world's poorest people. We can also improve the food security that we have as a society. But fundamentally, the way that we use land, the way that we grow food, the way that we provide energy for farmers, and the way that farmers are able to protect 
natural resources and put carbon back into the soil. These will be the key points for us being able to grow as a society and fight climate change at the same time.